G'day folks, my name is Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy and in this week's Art Studio Chat we look at whether you should apply a coloured ground to your painting surface and if so, how do you go about it? One of the questions I get asked quite a lot by beginners in particular is they've seen other artists who put down a coloured ground on their canvas or their painting surface and they're asking me the question, should I do the same thing? And how do I know when to do it? And what color or tone should I use in order to put down that colored uh, ground? And so in this week's Art Studio Chat, we're going to talk about that and I will show you how I go about that. There's no right or wrong answer to the question and there's no right or wrong way to apply a colored ground to a painting surface. It's all a matter of personal preference at the end of the day. Some people don't like to be faced with a purely white painting surface. And so the thought of you know, approaching a new canvas and it's completely white, blank, is terrifying to some people and so they will put down a coloured ground to take away all that whiteness. You know, my argument's always been, well then you just end up with a whole lot of whatever colour you've you know, you've, you've pl applied to the surface, whatever the coloured ground is, and you're sort of in the same position is my thought. And uh, typically, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I usually don't put down a coloured ground, although there's been lots of times in the past when I, when I have, but it's not generally a part of my working process, simply because at the Learn to Paint Academy, of course, we teach beginners how to get started, and we're trying to simplify all the different things you need to do when you're creating a painting. And we've taken out all the non-necessary things, right? And one of those is a color ground. That's not to say it's not a good idea because I do believe that it is uh, you know, absolutely a good idea to put down a color ground on your surface. Now, for those of you who are wondering what does he mean by a colored ground, it simply means, if I grab this board here, this is an MDF board that I've prepared with some white gesso, right? And I did a video on that last week on how to prepare an MDF board. And it doesn't matter if you're using boards or you're using a canvas or stretch canvas like I've got up here from our last live stream. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're talking about applying a color tone to that surface to remove the white and to tone um, the surface. Now there's a lot of good reasons why you might want to consider that. So here's an example, right? This one is just using alizarin crimson and a bit of water. It's an acrylic ground and as you can see it's gone a little bit pink um, which is perfectly fine and that is an example of a colored ground. So rather than having a white surface which I've got on the back, okay, um, I've gone and applied this colored ground to it in a alizarin crimson tone or a fairly pink bright tone. Here's another example okay, of another board. This is a alizarin crimson and yellow ochre and you can see it's fairly sort of splotchy, the colors, it's all over the place a little bit. And again, that's perfectly fine. There's no right or wrong way to do that. I kind of like that effect and you can see there's lots of different brush marks and things in there. So it's not a perfectly um, you know, finished surface. It's a little bit rough, it's a little bit random um, and I like happy accidents. So this gives an opportunity for that to occur is to have those sort of happy accidents um, take place. So the obvious question then is, do you need to apply a colored ground to your surface before you start? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Um, every painting project that I've done on Learn to Paint TV and all the courses in Learn to Paint Academy, you'll notice that it's very, very rare that I actually apply a colored ground for the reason I just mentioned before. I don't want to overcomplicate it for beginners and those just starting out. So adding in the step of a colored ground can slow down beginners from learning what I think are more important things to, uh, to focus on, right? Are there advantages though to applying a color ground? Well, yes, there are, absolutely. One of the big advantages is you create a unifying color that harmonizes the whole painting. Because tell me if you haven't done this, right? You do a painting and then you go back and you look at it closely a week later and there's lots of little white dots everywhere throughout that painting because you've used a white surface, right? Well, when you have a color ground, what you get is a color harmony right across the whole um, surface area of the painting and that can be you know a good thing it can actually um, enhance the effect of the painting right so that's one of the reasons why you might want to consider it, is to create a color harmony throughout the uh, the painting the other reason why you might want to consider it is let's say you're doing a landscape scene and there's going to be a lot of green you've got green grasses you've got green trees green hills and so on uh, then you know in that particular instance because greens are hard to get them to really have vibrancy and make them come alive in a painting by adding in say the complementary color which would be a red or a ready orange as a color ground underneath uh, those greens, 
is going to make the greens just have a bit more energy and a bit more life and a bit more vibrancy. So there's definitely a good um, argument to be made to apply a complement of the predominant color that you're going to find in your painting as, as one way of approaching it, right? And uh, for those of you who have you know followed me a, a lot, you'll know that whenever I do a landscape painting, if I'm, going to, if I'm going to do a green field, I will typically put down a tone as a underpainting for our block in that looks something like this. It's a reddy, yellow, orangey kind of earthy tone, right? And um, I do that for the very reason I just mentioned, to make the greens have greater vibrancy in the painting. And um, so for that reason, if you've got a predominantly green painting, you may consider uh, using a reddy orange tone on as your ground, like I've done here. Uh, if you've got another predominant color, then have a think about what the uh, the secondary color would be or the complementary color would be, right? So you might put down a orange um, ground on your surface if you've got a painting that's going to be predominantly blue. So the complement of green, of course, is red. So I usually try and make that red a little bit on the earthy side in my landscape paintings. So have a think about that. Is there a dominant color that's going to dominate the overall finished painting? And if so, what is the complement of that color that you can then use as a ground? So let's have a look at uh, a demonstration of how I prepare boards with a ground. You can do exactly the same thing on a canvas. Just so happens I've been preparing MDF boards here for a bit of a painting uh, trip. So let's go to the palette cam. And uh, this is our palette cam here. I'll pop out a couple of colors. So I'm going to use alizarin crimson. Here's a color that I like to use for this. So I'll just pop out. Oh, actually, that one's cadmium red hue, which I was going to use as well. So that's our bright red, our, or our warm red. Next to that, I'll pop out the alizarin crimson. Yep. Now this, as I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is a really simple process to do. And after you see me do it, you'll never have to think about it again. If you want to use a ground, um, do it. And uh, maybe just experiment a little bit. Try it with, try it without, and see what you personally like most, right? And then just go with that. Don't let people persuade you, it's a, it's a personal choice. I'm going to use paper towel, and I've got here a bucket of water, and as you'll see, that bucket of water is stained from our last uh, live stream painting, um, but I don't mind that. I actually like having a little bit dirty tone in there just to grey it all down a bit, because as a landscape painter, or a seascape painter, um, I don't like my colours to be too saturated. So a little bit of grey in there doesn't hurt, I don't think. So I've got here a 12 inch by 16 inch uh, prepared MDF board. In the last week's Art Studio chat, I talked about preparing both sides, so I've got a little B there, so I know that's the back, and this is my more finished surface with uh, extra coated gesso on it. And so how do I go about this? Well, what I do is I take the paper towel, okay, get rid of the, and I scrunch it up, so this is not very high-tech stuff here, scrunch it all up until I get a surface like that, I dip it in the water, let me show you, there's my water bucket. I just dip it in so that I've got that much of it wet, right there. And then I come over to my paints here. I'll just let that refocus. Okay, come over to my paints and I'll just sort of tap it into the paint and smear it round, right? And uh, if I want to get a little bit more earthy, I'll just go into a bit more of the yellow. Now you can use whatever colors you want. Um, these are the ones I like. I like a earthy, ready, warm tone, basically, um, on my boards okay and uh, I find as a landscape artist seascape artist that that works well and I like to keep it a little bit random so I'll just grab the whole of the yellow ochre there if it's too thick I'll just add a bit more water just dip into my bucket there a bit more water and then I can move it around so as long as I don't let it dry out and I keep it moist then uh, we're all good to go There's no dramas tap into a bit more of that red there warm it up over in that corner Okay, now that's pretty easy to do. Anyone can do this. You let this dry for 10, 15 minutes and it's going to be dry as, as it needs to be and wants to be, right? Um, and you can see I've got it very random there and I, that's the effect I like. Also, you can see there's big brush marks in here. That's because when I gessoed it, so that's how it looks there. Now, as you can see, there's um, brush marks in that uh, board as well coming through. And the reason that is because I... Uh, in the gesso, I've used a big hog hair brush and I haven't smoothed it out. I've just kept it fairly loose, fairly random. That's the effect that I like. And maybe you like a different effect. That's perfectly fine. Uh, there's no right or wrong, as we've said.
So I can warm that up even further. What I'll do here is I've got my bucket of water, another clean piece of towel here now. Just dip that in. You can see it's just using a little bit of the tip there. And I can come into this red here. And let's go for a little bit of a warmer, thicker. Um, look at that. Wow, you've got to be brave to do that, don't you? Um, but, you know, hey, it's the underpainting. It doesn't really matter because we're going to paint over it, right? We, once this is dry, we'll have a surface that we can uh, work on. Yeah, but that's a nice, strong, warm red, that one. Um, it's going to need a bold style of painting on it to counteract that red, but that's not a problem at all. Once this is dry, I can paint over this without any dramas at all. Okay. Now, if it's too thick, just while it's, you know, don't let it dry off completely, but I can get some more water in there and I can dilute it. Right? Just wet it down like that. So I've got it fairly wet there, and then I can just grab some clean paper towel. That's if I feel, oh, it's a bit thick, not sure I'm happy about that. And I can just take paint out of it like that. See that? Just to reduce it back. And, uh, and if, I, if I think I've gone too far, just get a bit more of that paint. And you can just darken it back up again. So look, it's completely up to you how you want to, you know, how much coating and how strong you want that to be but pretty simple sort of exercise or process rather to um to create the colored boards there what about if we want a cooler tone so let me get, grab another board here as you can see i've been busy preparing um mdf boards but what if we wanted you know a cooler tone because we're uh we're going to paint a cool scene well i can just grab my blue Let's just go dob, dob, dob like that, okay? And maybe we'll throw in oh, a little touch of white just to be on the safe side. So I can just get a little bit in the middle there and a bit in the middle there. So you don't even need a palette for this. How easy is that? Grab some more paper towel, clean paper towel. I don't wanna put the red one in there unless I wanna get a bit of a mix of tone, more, more water on there and just mix that on the board right there. Bang, look at that. Now I probably use way too much paint, but I'd rather do that than to not have enough and to not fully demonstrate it to you. Um, we can move that white around like so. And if you want a perfectly, um, you know, the same tone right across the board, then maybe you pre-mix that on a palette, the blue and the white. But if you like it a little bit random and um, you like happy accidents like I do, then have a bit of a play around with just mixing it on the board like that. Okay, and again, if you want to thin it down and lighten it, more water. If you want to pull some of it out, clean paper towel. Have a look at that. Too easy, right? So how easy is that? Anyone can do that. You can create a color ground just with a bit of paint. One tip that I have heard from somebody recently is that they get their gesso and they mix a tone into it and they mix up the gesso. So when they apply the gesso, they've already got their color ground already there so up to you as you've seen we've used a pure red and a pure blue and white here and we've got a warm and a, a cool version but we've also used our alizarin crimson on its own gives a pinky tone and our alizarin crimson with the yellow ochre and that gives us an earthy orangey tone which is my personal favorite it's almost like a burnt sienna um, probably don't need to buy burnt sienna if you mix those two together and just play around with it right so should you start to tone your boards well I'd recommend have a go at least at least experiment and try a few try a cool version try a warm version see if you like it maybe you do maybe you don't it's not absolutely necessary i've taught thousands of beginners uh, to paint without doing it and um, it's not necessary but there are some advantages to it and uh, if you're like me you like to explore new things and try new ways explore different techniques until you arrive at something that you absolutely love to do have a go at it you know you've seen how easy it is the, the boards and canvases are pretty cheap for you to experiment with. Now, what happens if I let this blue dry off and I'm, I just absolutely hate it and I can't stand the thought of painting on it? Not a problem. I'll just put a coat of gesso on it later on after it's dry. So nothing's fixed, right? Um, there's no mistakes. There's no right or wrong way except to have fun and experiment. Hope you've enjoyed this week's Art Studio Chat. I'll see you next week and enjoy your painting. Until next week. Cheers for now.